Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021, and follow through is the key, and we're not seeing much of it. I'm going to show you what I'm looking at. Hi, my name is Jeff Tomasulo. I'm the co-founder of TacticalIncome.com and CEO of Espula Capital Management. If you like what you see on these videos, please subscribe to our channel. Now, let's get to my computer screens and let's get to work. All right, guys, let's get to work. It is Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021, and it is about 8.16 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, I want to talk about follow through, right? Because the market has not, we haven't seen that in the major indexes. We've seen it in a few select stocks like uh, Tesla's had some good follow through over the last few days. But for the most part, with all the news that came out, we're not getting the follow through that you would suspect that we'd get from the market. And I saw that yesterday happen in the IWM and you could see with these high bars here, right? You know, that you have these little tail and uh, tails up here that's showing you that it was a lot higher um, than where it was. But uh, let me show you how you can see it a little more clear, right? So if you go on a daily chart, you can see, and I love doing this. I talk about this to our students all the time. I, I've done it numerous times on this channel. Is that I want to see different time frames so it can show me what this stock or the asset class was doing during di different uh, time frames, right? During an intraday chart, this is a one day from 9.30 in the morning when the market opens up to 4 o'clock when the market closes. And then you'll see I'll go to a 10 day. But what we've seen here in the in the IWM is that it had a nice move up in the morning and then the rest of the day, what did it do? It sold off. And then you go to the 10 day chart, right? A 15 minute 10 day chart. You can start to see a little bit of a pattern started to develop here, right? We, we get up to this certain level up here and then it sells off. It opens up big, right? On the on July 30th, sells off the rest of the day. The first day of the month yesterday, August 2nd, it opens up and then sells off, right? That is a certain pattern that you're starting to see and understand that, hey, it's tried. How many times? One, two, three times to get above this level or, and, and this, when I say levels, guys, again, I say this uh, with areas, right? Because we don't know. You can see I can move it down here. Is it a 225 or it's a 224? Well, you know what? It's not exact, but it goes into that area that I, I want to see it. If it gets above here, I want to see it get above 224, 225, the area, not a specific level. But you're seeing that there was a lack of follow through. Where else did I see this? On John Deere yesterday, if you go to DE, um, John Deere had, a, you know, when you look at the chart on a, on a yearly chart, uh, you could see that it's been consolidating. You want it to break above this area. And then what happens yesterday, right? It opens up, right? And then it sells off to the last few, the, the, the rest of the day. And then you go to a 10 day chart, you'll see that nice little consolidation pattern in here over a 10 day period. It breaks up above it and it looks like it's going to break out even further. And then it comes right back in. So that's what I mean about follow through, right? We're not seeing the oomph that we need in a lot of these stocks. And if you go to the SPY, right, we're sitting at all time highs. We're down a little bit this morning, but what, what happens? We open up and then we sell off, right? 10 day chart, you'll see us at all time highs, right? And then sell off, open up, sell off, open up, sell off, right? The, the, the NASDAQ, same kind of thing, open it up over 10 days, sell off, open up, sell off a little bit, open up, sell off. You get the drift, right? We're seeing that there's not the oomph that it really needs to go higher. So it's a little bit of a caution, right? And, you know, what do you make of this? Uh, you know, I'd be selling some call spreads. I've said this already to get some exposure in some stocks that have had really tremendous up moves and to sell some call spreads in the NASDAQ and the SPY uh, it, until, and the reason I use call spreads is because I don't know what's gonna happen. We've been seeing this market 
kind of sell off and then go right back to all time highs. So define your risk, but get exposure so you can make some money um, and protect some of your other positions by selling those call spreads, whether it's call spreads in the, you know, the major indices or call spreads in, like I said, certain stocks um, that, we're do that you're out there. And I think it'll be very helpful for you and beneficial to do that. All right. So now certain stocks that I'm, uh, I'm seeing and there may be some news out there, but one of the things, and it, a lot of these stocks are coming out with earnings. So it's going to be some massive movement in there, but here's a stock space that came on my radar. And why did it come on my radar yesterday? Well, because after a big down move, right, it has been sitting in a little, it's been consolidated down here. And then we got a nice big uh, volume day yesterday, uh, or not big, but a somewhat of a volume day and price uh, uh, movement, right? It was up 6.2%. So it came on my radar and now it's coming out with earnings, but this is something I'm going to watch going into earnings. And, you know, it, it, it's hard to put a trade on, but if you want to put a trade on, right, you allocate a smaller amount of capital. You're not going to allocate large amounts of capital. But if you think space is going to go higher, you can obviously buy a call spread to take advantage of a move to the upside in earnings. You could uh, buy a put spread uh, to, um, you know, take advantage of the down, a possible down move going into earnings or, you know, and the, I don't know if you look on our vol meter, it is elevated to a certain extent, but not volatility, you know, for that vol meter to be uh, really extended, it needs to be above five, six, but going into earnings, you know, uh, it's not too bad. So you can take advantage of a little bit of the vol crush. Um, you know, it's, you know, to me, when I look like a stock like this, I would be hesitant to sell um, put uh, call spreads into this because it already had a pretty significant down move. That doesn't mean it can't go a lot further, but I would be on, I would be leaning towards the fact if I was going to be looking to sell options going into this, into earnings season, I would be more on the uh, the side of selling a put spread because it's already had a pretty significant down move from where it is. Again, it doesn't mean it can't go lower, but you know, considering what it did, I like to lean towards the opposite direction of where this stock was going, right? So coming down, I want to sell a put spread. If it was going into earnings uh, right here, I would look to sell a call spread, but my capital is going to be a lot less because the probabilities of having a big move is high. And then the question, and I'm going to show you a little tidbit right now, what is, what is the possible move, right? Well, if you want to know what the market is, you know, uh, pricing in what type of move during an option, uh, during this earnings season or right now or any time you want to see it, you go into the option chain and you can spit over the next 30 days, 31 days, you go to at the money option and then you take the midpoint of the call and the midpoint of the um, the put. I mean the call and then the put. See, I got I got messed up there. So say it's about three. Let's just say for all intents and purposes, it's three dollars and thirty cents each. You add two sides together. You get six dollars and sixty cents. That would be the expected move from this price point over the next 31 days. So we know that, you know, space is coming out with earnings. You would have to go down and say, hey, in the next three days while the earnings come out, what type of move can I expect from this, from the, the at the money, $32, right? You get $1.60 here, you get $1.45, you add them together, together and that's what you get the expected move. So just a little quick math, it's not exact, but you, that's what you can, again, in some, uh, you know, this is the tactical income trading platform that you get with our subscription service. Um, you know, uh, you, we, have a uh, our, we have a subscription service where you get trade alerts, there's coaching calls, there's the tactical income trading platform. You get our proprietary algorithm, the vol meter, which helps you pinpoint stocks and asset classes that you should be focusing on. Uh, to trade options and what option strategy to use based on that number. So anyway, space I find very interesting. Lyft coming out with earnings. Uh, and again, I like, I like the way these stocks are. And I'm kind of watching these stocks, guys, because I want to see 
how the economy is opening up because ride sharing is one of those things. Are people going to start using Lyft and Uber? You would suspect that they would after we are getting vaccinated. And Lyft looks a lot better um, than um, Uber. We'll get to Uber again uh, in a second. But look, you get here a higher uh, higher lows. Um, you have some, you know, and I we do technical analysis a little bit, but you got this like descending little wedge. And oh, let me see. I draw terribly, but here we go. So there's going to be a big move, right? You know, one way or the other, Lyft is going to move somewhere. Uh, I hate when I say that, but you can see that it is kind of edging up. I would be, you know, it looks to me that it could go higher. What do you do to take advantage of that? Even though we have earnings, again, call spreads, you could buy call spreads. Um, I wouldn't be selling options into this move especially well we have 3.67 not bad but again i would be looking and waiting for earnings and the earnings to come out to see which direction this is going to happen in and then they look at uber uber is sitting at its these this little area of support going into earnings now this is a really hard one to place a trade i would have to wait for earnings to come out but again if you think it's going to move to the lower part you know and break down through this you could be easily be buying a uh, a put spread here going into earnings to and allocate a little bit of a capital. Um, and then Alibaba came out with earnings. And the reason I'm bringing up Alibaba is because, you know, it's been getting massively beat up because of all the Chinese news. Now earnings is out. So watching how it performs over the next few days. Again, investing in Chinese stocks are going to be hard. Uh, so you have to use defined risk trades, but this stock has been beaten up and it's starting to show a little bit of uh, support. And now that the earnings is out, do we get a, a move up in Alibaba to try to, you know, uh, make up some of the lost ground here? I mean, you could be looking to buy call spreads into it for maybe a move up to the 225, 250 area. But I want to wait to see how the market reacts to these earnings over the next day or two before I start to allocate uh, capital to that. So, all right, guys, I hope that helped. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, hit the subscribe button. And remember, check out the link in there. In I put in the description for the Tactical Income Subscription Service. Again, we have trade alerts, coaching calls, and our algorithm and the, tra the trading platform. And we have a special going on right now, so check it out. And remember, guys, when trading, Trade with an edge and we'll talk to you guys soon.